This is going to be verse by verse of Romans chapter 13. And we're going to look at a rebellious generation. Because we are living in a very rebellious generation. And people think that they have all the answers. They believe they are special. They believe they deserve special treatment or have more rights than other people. However, nobody is above the powers that are ordained by God. No one deserves special treatment. But here are some reasons that we know we are dealing with a rebellious generation. Number one, they have no respect for authority. In Romans 13, 1, it says, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. So we're supposed to be subject unto the higher powers. And this is obviously not talking about the spiritual wickedness in high places but it's talking about the higher powers on earth that God has set up and it says in verse 2 whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation today there is a lot of rebellion against higher powers that God himself has placed in authority. And when laws of the land don't contradict God's laws, then we are supposed to obey those laws. The verse said the powers that be are ordained of God. Just because some people in authority abuse their power doesn't mean we should disobey all authority. Just because a crooked cop beats someone up doesn't mean we should disobey all cops. Matthew 28, 18 says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Uh, the Lord has power to give it to whomsoever he will. It is true that God also gives power to the devil so that he can set up certain kings and as a judgment on the sins of man, but God is still in power over the devil. The powers that be are ordained of God. 1 Peter 2, 13 and 14 says, Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. Notice it says, As unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers. Uh, God sets uh, higher powers up to get rid of evil many times and Paul said in Romans 13 1 let every man be subject unto the higher powers no one is above the law no one is special many people today have this attitude of nobody is going to tell me what to do but that's just a rebellious spirit and it's not of God now Romans 13 2 whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. So if you resist the powers that be, if they aren't conflicting God's laws, then you are resisting God and not just the man. You will receive to yourself damnation, as the verse says. And that's not talking about taking away your salvation or putting you in hell. This is talking about damnation on this earth and this is why men can't stay out of jail they continue to resist they go against uh, God's laws and they go against the higher powers that God has set up and they get put in jail for it they receive to themselves damnation and it is a completely different matter to go to jail for preaching the gospel or for preaching on the street or, or doing something that's not against God's laws and you're being put in jail unjustly. But how many people do you know who are going to jail for serving God? Most of the people you see being put in jail is because they're doing something that's hurting somebody else or that's doing something evil to somebody else. But we're in a rebellious generation that does not respect this authority. Everywhere you go, you hear people talking bad about cops, talking bad about people that are in authority. And of course, the cops and the people in authority, most of the time they're not saved, but they're there as a deterrent to crime. 
And another thing, we're in a rebellious generation because number two, people are without fear. And that's another reason we're in such a rebellious time. Men don't have natural fear of authority. They think so highly of themselves and they think they are above the law. And in a sense, it is smart to fear some things. It's certainly not cowardly to fear God and to fear the powers that he's ordained. Romans 13, 3 says, For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. So rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Uh, imagine if there was never any cops on duty. You would have people breaking into your house every night. Cops aren't a terror to good works, but to evil works. A lot of people will say, well, I've got me a gun, so they better not come in my house. And that's really besides the point, because having cops on duty is a deterrent to crime. If there were no laws against murder and rape and stealing, then there would obviously be an increase in those things. Rulers and laws aren't a terror to good works, but to the evil. For the most part, if you're not doing something that you're not supposed to do, then the cops aren't going to bother you. The cops are sitting behind every corner in my town, and I've never even had a run-in with them. And even with cops, people still break the law. They still have no fear of God before their eyes. And they are too lazy to go out and get a job, so they want to steal from people who actually work. They think they're special. But... Rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then be, uh, wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same, as it says in verse three. So do that which is good, and you'll stay out of trouble. It's not that hard. Do you know anybody who just can't stay out of trouble? If you want to stay out of trouble, I'll tell you what to do. Do that which is good. 1 Thessalonians 4, 11 through 12 says, And that you study to be quiet, and to do your own business, and to work with your own hands as we commanded you, that you may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that you may have lack of nothing. So it's good to get a job and work with your own hands. It's good to pay your own way if possible. Working will keep you out of trouble. Make an honest living. Go to work every day. One reason people can't stay out of trouble is because they won't hold down a job. Second Thessalonians three ten through eleven says, For even when we were with you, this we commanded you that if any would not work, neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Get a job, work every day. When you get off of work, go home and be with your wife, enjoy your family until it's time for bed, and then repeat the next day. It's that easy. You work to make money, and then don't overspend the money by going out every night and blowing it. Then you'll have no need to steal money, or steal things to get money. So Romans three, or Romans 13, 3 through 4 says, For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Notice it says he beareth not the sword in vain. This is Paul telling you capital punishment is biblical. The man who pulls the handle on the electric chair is the minister of God. He executes wrath upon the man that doeth evil. Aren't you glad that men like Ted Bundy are put to death and not able to come and rape and murder your daughter? Aren't you glad that men like Joseph James D'Angelo is locked up? It is a good, healthy fear to be afraid of the electric chair. And when I see people who commit murder and they're sitting in a courtroom while the judge says, you're guilty, I wonder why they start crying because shouldn't they have thought through the consequences in their mind of what's going to happen to them and uh, not committed to murder. 
They didn't fear the person bearing the sword, and they didn't fear the powers that are ordained of God. The Bible is obviously for capital punishment. Genesis 9, 6 says, Whoso sheddeth man's blood by man shall his blood be shed, for in the image of God made he man. So there you have capital punishment before the law. And Paul said it was right for him to die if he committed anything worthy of death. In Acts twenty five eleven, so there you have capital punishment after the law, just in case you think that's only for the time of the law. But we see it before, during, and after. But why else do you think we are in a rebellious generation? Number three is because men have a seared conscience. Romans thirteen five says, Wherefore you must needs be subject, meaning to the higher powers, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. You shouldn't obey higher powers only for the reason of fearing their wrath and what they can do to you. You should also obey for conscience sake. But men have a seared conscience. Titus 1.15 says, Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. The people who commit crimes have their conscience seared from seeing so many crimes committed on TV that they just don't see anything wrong with it. Uh, Ted Bundy blames porn for his murder spree. And today you have young men being raised up on porn and violent video games. This is a bad combination. They are violent and perverted. Uh, Romans thirteen six and 7 says, for for this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Uh, people today, uh, they have no conscience. Uh, they only care about themselves. They're lovers of their own self. So they're not worried about giving tribute to whom tribute is due, fear to whom fear, and honor to whom the honor is due. And since police officers and people in the government are working for us, it is good and right to pay tribute, render therefore to all their duties. It is not right to pay, to not pay a police officer or a firefighter or a president for their duty. Imagine if there was no police officer. Imagine if there was no president or these higher powers that are doing these jobs that you just don't realize that, that they're there. And First Peter 2.17 says, Honor all men, love their brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Is it not right to honor the president because of the office he holds? Even if we don't agree with his beliefs and choices. And I know it's a corrupt government. We, we have a corrupt government. We have people in the government that are, are perverted, wicked people. We don't support the wicked that they're doing. And we know that government in the Bible has been wicked. Look at First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles. They did evil in the sight of the Lord. They had high places and they sacrificed their kids to their idols. Uh, I don't doubt for a second that men in higher uh, place higher power today aren't doing wicked things similar to that but if we're going to go by romans 13 for the most part these higher powers aren't a terror to good works but to the evil so we need to honor the higher powers for that reason doesn't mean we have to go along with the horrible things they may say if they conflict with what god says but another reason that we are in a rebellious generation is because men's love have, has waxed cold. In Romans thirteen eight, it says, O oh, no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. You see, as we talked about before, many people refuse to work and they owe everyone money. There is always that one person in the family who's, who owes everyone $500. They think they're special. And they think that they deserve for you to go out and work and just keep them up. But if you have to borrow something, pay it back. It says, owe no man anything but to love one another. 
For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. If you fulfill the law, it, you fulfill the law because you you love someone. And if you love someone, then you're not going to commit crimes against them and do them wrong. Because look at Romans 13, 9. It says, For this thou shalt not commit adultery. If you love your brother, you're not going to touch his wife. Thou shalt not kill. If you love people, you're not going to kill people. Thou shalt not steal. If you love people, you won't steal what they've worked for. Because you're lazy and don't want to work yourself. Thou shalt not bear false witness. If you love your neighbor, you're not going to lie about him. Thou shalt not covet. If you love your neighbor, you won't covet his house and everything in it to the point that you steal it. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. If you love your neighbor as much as you love your own wicked flesh, then you would never commit any of these crimes. When you commit crimes, you are always hurting someone else. You lack love each time you do it. The love of many has waxed cold in these times we're in. In Matthew 24, Jesus describes the tribulation as a time when the love of many has waxed cold. So imagine the crimes that would be committed in that time. They have a wicked movie series out now called The Purge. Supposedly for a day or a week, all crime is legal. So you can just go around and commit murder and rape and steal and act like the devil. And this is what is in the heart of man. And if there was no higher power... Because higher powers are a terror to good works, not to the evil. If there was no higher power, that's exactly what would be going on every second of every day is constant, just unchecked murder, rape, stealing, and being a devil on the street. And this is what is in the heart of man. The average man is so doped up on pornography, when he sees your daughter or your wife in town in her short shorts, all he can think about is his rape. And his lustful desires. It's getting to be where it's not safe anymore. And I'm getting to be where I'm just paranoid walking out in town with my family. Because I feel like I'm having to watch over my back. Because of how wicked people are. And I'm, I'm always blown away by what women wear. Don't they know that there are wicked perverts everywhere? It's like they're tempting the raped, rapists. Like saying, pick me. Um, but in, in 2019, we need to be careful what we're wearing. That's just inviting the rapist. Romans 13.10 says, Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. If a man loves, he won't commit crimes. A man that doesn't even love his own family enough to provide for them isn't worth trusting as far as you can throw him. If he doesn't even love his own family, you think he's going to love your family? You think he's not going to do something bad to you and your family to keep himself up if he won't even keep his own family up? Uh, the low-down devil would fornicate with your wife, fornicate with your daughter, spend everything in your bank account, bank account, and just live off your income like a leech the rest of his life until he died if he could get by with it. Luckily, we have rulers who are a terror to good works. He couldn't get by with that. Most times, I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but most times, for the most part, rulers are a terror to good works. Uh, 2 Timothy 3, 2 says, For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous. That's the rebellious generation we're living in. They would take everything you have if they could. You can't trust hardly any man with your wife. What is another reason we are in such a rebellious generation? Another reason is men don't understand the times. Romans 13, 11 through 12 says, And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. So it's time to wake up. It's getting late. Uh, we are about at the jumping off point. However, 
men don't understand the times. They are thinking the world is just going to continue on as it always has, and they're just thinking they're going to live out all their days. But they don't understand we are in perilous times, and most likely trouble is coming soon. They have no ambition to do something for the Lord before the time is over. So they're rebellious. They don't understand that the entertainment industry and the music industry and the video game industry is just the devil's plan to destroy the masses and his plan to put rebellion in the heart of every person. They don't understand the times. Uh, these things are open doors for the devil to come in and people are highly influenced by what they see, what they're putting in their eyes and their ears. If they see everyone fornicating and committing crimes, then that's what they're going to eventually end up doing. They don't understand the times. Paul says, redeem the time because the days are evil. More and more, I have become more conscious of how I'm using my time. The Lord has blessed me with time. And I want to use as much of it as I can to do as much for him as I can. Romans 13, 11 says, And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Now notice this salvation is salvation of the body. And each day we are getting closer and closer to the rapture where we will get a glorified body. It's high time to awake out of sleep. Is the Lord going to come back and you be in a spiritual nap. The problem today is men are sleeping all day and staying up all night, and it's not because they're on third shift. The freaks come out at night. If you have ever had to make an unexpected visit to Walmart at 3 a.m., then you know what I mean. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. They sleep all day, then go out at night and commit crimes. Romans thirteen twelve says, The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. The night in the Bible can represent the church age, and it's far spent. The day is at hand. It's almost over. We need to put off works of darkness, because they just weigh you down when you're trying to run the race. So cast them off and put on the armor of light, and it's a lot less heavy. So we need to cast off the works of darkness and put on the whole armor of God. As it talks about in Ephesians chapter 6 verses 13 and 18. So if you understand the times, then you've got your armor on. You sleep in it, run in it, walk in it, shower in it. Uh, Romans 13, 13 through 14 says, Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness. Not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. We need to walk honestly, not in rioting. Because if you live like a Christian, you're going to be an oddball. First Peter four, three through four says, For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness. Lusts, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable adulteries, wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. They think it strange that ye run not to the same excess of riot. I can't tell you the amount of times people have asked me why I don't drink, why I don't fornicate, why I wanted to get married why I don't smoke and why I just don't live like the devil or live like I used to. They think living in sin is living in freedom, but it's bondage. It's, it isn't walking honestly. And when, when you walk in those things, you're not loving anyone but the flesh. You're not loving your soul. If you're saved, you're still... You, if you're saved, then you've, you've thought about your soul, about where it's going to go when you die. And if you're saved, you're still not loving your soul when you walk in the flesh. Because your soul is going to spend eternity in heaven if you're saved. And walking dishonestly cheats you of rewards that you're going to have for all eternity. So let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. And chambering is just lewd behavior, fornication. 
that is the average break room at the factory they fornicate and then go to work and talk about it the stuff you hear in the break room is x-rated wantonness is self-indulging lovers of pleasure just with no restraint and some people have eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin sit down on a bench with other men at the mall and you'll see what I mean they have eyes full of adultery they stare at every woman that walks by but Romans 13 13 says let us walk honestly as in the day not in rioting and drunkenness not in chambering and wantonness not in strife and envying many Christians uh, may not struggle with fornication and drunkenness so they think they're okay but they struggle with they struggle with strife and envying they can't have a conversation without fighting they're envious and they can't congratulate or be happy for anyone about anything uh, Romans thirteen fourteen says put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof we need to put on the new man the Lord Jesus Christ and put off the old man our sinful flesh Romans 6 4 through 5 says therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. When we got saved, our flesh died, our spirit was made alive, so we need to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and walk in newness of life. Let the new man that is in you have control over the old man. If you're putting on the new man then you're putting off the old man, which is the flesh. Romans 6, 6 says, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So our old man is crucified with Christ. When he tries to get off of the cross, you just have to nail him back up. When he tries to get out of the grave, you just have to stick your foot on his head and push him back in. But this has been why we are in a rebellious generation.